Hold a second to order. If I could have an acceptance of the agenda, please. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're going to be running with three of us tonight, so I think we can handle everything that happens. Uh, let's see. Are there any walk-ins there this evening? Anyone have any walk-ins? Business they need to take care of? Okay. Uh, Trisha's ready. I'll move on to the report from the town administrator. Um, I'll be very brief since um, I just returned today, but um, I have met with Mr. Bangert, who is an acting town administrator, to catch up on um, things that have happened over the past few weeks. Um, he's done a lot of work around the public safety complex and starting to educate folks about um, that project and why it's needed and the current conduction con conditions of the existing fire and police facilities and met with the chairman of the Public Facilities Master Plan Committee um, relative to doing that. We're out for advertisement for the local inspector position, which is building inspector, uh, approved a town meeting in the coastal resources officer position, and I hope to be making a decision within the next uh, week or two about the Board of Health Director. So very grateful to Jennifer Sullivan, who's working part-time for us. and. Um, we continue to have some new staff and getting them acclimated, and including in your office and in other departments. The library project uh, is moving as quickly as it can. We're out to bid for uh, architectural design services for that. At your next meeting, you'll be awarding hopefully the bid for Wi-Fi in the Harbor, which is approved at town meeting a year ago. Um, we opened bids for that last week, and we also opened bids for an assessment center for lieutenant promotional in the police department. We have two firefighters who just graduated from the fire academy, so our personnel issues, I think, really continue to uh, dominate a lot of what we're doing. Um, I want to thank Lorraine and Sheila and Michelle and Mr. Bangett for uh, filling in the last two weeks while I was out, uh, keeping things going. Mr. Bangan ended up working a lot more than I think he or may have anticipated, but it was needed, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay. I, too, would like to thank everyone for chipping in, doing extra work while you're out. Uh, if people watched us a couple of weeks ago. We're all holding our tablets, trying to hold them and read them. Well, Al Bangett <laughs> made these awesome blocks, and uh, I think you ought to pat them. So thanks for doing that today, Al. All right. Anything else, guys? Move on? Okay. Next to the discussion, vote for some one-day liquor licenses we have at, it looks to me, um, at the uh, Waterfront Club, uh, the Young, Young's Boat Yard. What we're um, proving are the caterers that we have approved in the past and we're just uh well actually it's the marine park center as well as the gar hall one for gar yes yeah, so there's some of both in there but i believe every one of them is uh, a caterer that we've approved in the past so what we have is starting with may 31st and it looks to be through june 2nd Anyone in the audience have any comments, questions? We don't really require that these caterers come here because, uh, like I said, they have been here in the past. So, the board have any questions or comments? If not, I'll accept yeah, the motion no, for these. Just that the licenses. These are caterers are for events that people have um, um, sought to 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 um, what do you call it? Lease the uh, Maritime Center and the Gar, and of course, in order to do so, they need caterers to do it. It's basically private functions that people are looking to do. Thank you. Motion? Please. Yeah. Move to grant Alan McKenzie Catering a one-day liquor license for Situate Maritime Center, May 31st from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Front Street Gourmet, a one-day liquor license for Situate Maritime Center, June 6th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m., June 8th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m., and June 28th from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. I have a motion and a second. I'll second. Okay. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Silent Chef, a one-day liquor license for Situate Maritime Center, June 7th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And second. And second by John. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And last but not least, Hospital Hostess, June 21st, GAR Hall, 6 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. What was the date on June 21st on my hard um, copy? 
on my hard copy, I have the Front Street Gourmet would like June 28th at the Maritime Center from for 2 to 8. Yeah, we just loved... Um, oh, yes. All right, was that, was that done? When I, when I read this, All yes. That's Street on. Gourmet. That's there. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. I see that. Okay, so we've covered everything. Excellent. I don't want to leave That's anybody it. out. Good. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Now moving on to the same idea, uh, a blanket beer and wine license for a one-day license of the GAR Hall looks to be for six of them for the year 2014. Okay. okay. Who is this? Um, so I'm wondering. Uh, um, Jack. Jackie Kalari? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's the one who actually manages uh, the GAR Hall. So what we're doing in essence is okay. they apparently have six events and instead of having them come in um, for each event, we're giving her a blanket. So it's what we used to do for when, <coughs> before the town managed the Maritime Center and the foundation did, we give them blanket ones so they have them in advance. So if they book something two weeks from now and you're not meeting, they right. still have the opportunity to have the event. Okay. With that. I'm yeah. fine with that. Motion. motion. I'll move to grant uh, the GAR Hall six blanket one day beer and wine licenses. Second. I have motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Moving on to a Hawker's Peddler's license. Right. I understand this is a young entrepreneur that wants to. Uh, Start his own business, and uh, I'll give you the floor in just just one second. So uh, you you've been across the hall and spoken to the sec secretary to find out the rules and regulations. Yep. Pretty familiar with that sort of stuff. And I just found out tonight that you just have to go before the board of health to get their stamp of approval. So the only thing we're going to change in our motion, guys, is just uh, contingent on their vote. And obviously, she'll look further you know, public safety sort of things, all right? And so, uh, thank you for taking yeah. the time. Would you introduce yourself and tell us the name of your company and just some my free name, advertising? Uh, my name is E.J. Colhane and I'm a rising sophomore at Trinity College and originally I started this, trying to start a hot dog stand in Situate because it provides a great deal of experience of how to run a business and I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't think I could make money as a college student looking to pay off school and all that type of stuff. And I live in Cohasset, however, my family has owned a summer home in Situate on Marion Road since 1962, so we spend a lot of our summers here. And I also uh, work at Edward Jones in Situate for Deborah Flanagan and James Cabanaro, and I'm really just interested in learning how to start a business and what it takes and all the procedures such as this one to go through to start a business. And um, thank you for your time. All right. Any I, before I open up to the board, any <coughs> is your idea to stay at a certain beach? Um, we're I'm looking to start at Egypt Beach and Peggy Beach because I believe those are the you know very popular beaches, and I know the lighthouse already has a hot dog stand. I don't want to go somewhere where someone else is already set up, and I think those are two areas where there hasn't been a lot of people that have done this type of thing, and as well as the baseball field, specifically Greenbush, because. I know in Barnes Field in Cohasset there was a, a stand set up, or a building rather, that <coughs> has grown over the years and it's been very successful. And I think that at Greenbush there could be, because there's so many baseball games there all around, you know, multiple towns, and I think that would be also my ideal place to set up. I was having a brief conversation with our Secretary Lorraine, and I remember license, you know, granting these licenses in the past, and we were trying to put our heads together, and she was looking back into the um, uh, the, the license renewals and apparently some have not renewed if I'm not mistaken we're correct mm -hmm. so he could go to ball fields just as well as the yes. beaches mm -hmm. Those are spots are available. that's great how'd you get your hot dog cut um, I ordered online uh, yeah good, <laughs> good. <laughs> I, I heard about that that's, that's great that, that's all I have for right now I'll open it up to you guys I just actually you answered my question I was gonna ask um, not that we obviously we'd love to have you in Situate, but I was just curious as why Situate, not Cohasset, but you already answered the question. So, um, so yeah, I think, I think Egypt is a good fit because there's nothing around that area, really, you know. Um, but that's really all I have. Mine it? 
I don't know if there's a store down there. Not so really anymore. Yeah, mine. But he, a, he had mentioned, uh, you know, yourself a tide Peggy. calendar because the, sometimes the beach disappears at high tide. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. work, work, work around that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have, um, just to add to my file, uh, sales on sales tax on meals and beverages registration. All right, good. Um, just to add to my file. Sam will be happy. So how many do we have, Lorraine, if you are aware of? Um, we only have one other hot dog stand in situ, and that's at the lighthouse. That's the one. They renewed? Okay. And then we have a Dell's Lemonade stand um, that's at various locations. Okay. It, it, Mostly down by the uh, Marine. So the... The one by the lighthouse, is that the one that you'll see sometimes over by the old Pier 44 parking lot? No, that there? was a different one. That was yeah, that's Michael the one I was Healy. thinking about. Yeah, Michael Healy, and I don't think he renewed. No. No, and I'm then you had one at Hamarok for a couple of years, and they didn't renew. Right. That was right. similar. Yeah. You know, you know, mother with her children, right? Mm. Well, I know the, um, I don't have the benefit of uh, Mr. Vignani being here, because I know the Little League field at Greenbush, I think they sell on occasion sodas and candy so there may be a direct competition there that's that's one downside um, so I'm reluctant to say go down there right now I understand why because it makes sense to be able to sell not just there but also on the roach field because when they have games it's a good location there's nothing around there but talk to them go go talk to them first because I think it's it right I think that one might, would be my first suggestion because I'm not inclined to say go down to Greenbush um, I certainly think I've, I've always felt that Roachfield would be a good location, and there's not one at that. <coughs> Having said that, though, um, I guess the question is, um, in the past, our rule has been we, we've given somebody one location. Obviously, right now, we only have one other. So um, I don't know how the board feels, whether we give two locations, Egypt and Peggotty, um, but I would only say under the caveat that that may not be the case next year if other people are looking yeah. um, for positions or, yeah, or for locations. Um, so I guess I have no issues, you know, um, uh, if you have the opportunity to be at one location and then maybe the next day at another, but I only forewarn you that next year that probably won't, might not be the same if you come back again. But I think it's a great opportunity. and. Um, I'm sure. Besides, I know this sounds kind of silly when I'm going to ask you, but I know the board has asked it in the past, and neither of my two brothers are here tonight who probably be asking the question. Aside from hot dogs, are you selling like candy and sodas and things like that to um, complement it? Sodas and then the bonds, obviously. Okay. And then water bottles. All right. I, I only say that because there is the policy that we have that you should be aware of that you can't sell within a certain amount of um, distance from stores. Yeah. Okay. And I just only say that because the stores we want to be aware of but mm -hmm. the two locations you're looking for don't have them and I certainly support you on them okay so we're gonna just limit them to two locations I would say probably yeah at this point do you want to do that on the motion do you want to I suppose we should I don't know if I'm in favor but I mean it's the only one that's come forward you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, you know, he, he can stay busy, but all right, we'll Well, we'll stop. you know, we'll I guess I, I, I'm happy to discuss right. it. I only say it because I'm saying. What if, what if, some, what if there isn't anyone else that comes forward? And he could hit the beaches could we, in the morning. Could we expand it at that point? He, could we expand it at that point? And he goes to the ball fields if this games. I, I have no problems. With, I'm only saying that um, I, mean, I know I the ball fields probably with win. John, though. Sean, I think the Little League does its own booster. Oh, yes. Right. No, I said that's why I suggested to yeah. talk to them first before he yeah. shows up with his cart, for yeah. sure. Um, you know, because you want the blessing of them, too. It's I really... speak with them and then come back for the next meeting, if that would work better. I would rather give you an opportunity between now and the next meeting to at least be able to sell some hot dogs. <laughs> um, but I'd at least give you a chance to talk to Little League, because they may say yay or nay. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I, I guess, it, as I say to you, I mean, I'm happy to say if you want to move, hot dog will travel, then, you know, um, I'm, I'm not adverse to it. I'm just saying that somebody may come in in a month and then we're going to have, <laughs> you're right. all over the place, right. Right. then we're going to have a free for all. Right. Uh, we'll uh, just, I don't know. That's you know, all I'm you saying. You mentioned a couple locations. Maybe we'll stop there. And then he, you can always come back to us in a month. Yes. If, if, and, and we or, you know, contact Lorraine and see if there's any others. And if there hasn't been any others, others and you want to expand, then come back in. Uh -huh. All right? Thank you. That'd be, that'd be great. Egypt and Peggy right off the bat. I mean. Yeah, you'll sell a lot. Okay. Well, before we make a motion, I want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. If I see you, I'll be stopping. <laughs> <laughs>
We want a motion? Please. I'll move to grant a Hocker Peddler's license to Wicked Wine or Hot Dog? Wieners. Wieners. Okay. Uh, stand at the Egypt Beach and Peggotty Beach locations. I have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Uh, I, I think I need to put. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, and right. condition for the for the I guess it's for a year, right? That's what this is for the yeah, license for. Okay, okay. but a condition um, that you obtain Board of Health approval. Second. Six. Yes. I have a motion and a second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good luck. Best Aye. of luck to you. Okay. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> Next is a common Vic license. We have a chain of ownership uh, for the. Sand Hills General Store, Thornton's, Flynn's. I think we all familiar with that store. How are you? Kind of came as a little bit of a surprise. You were buying the store. Well, good evening. My name is my name is Dan McAdam. This is where we'll make our purchasing the Sand Hills store. Here's my for the common VIX license, and yeah, it was. Uh, this was something that was kind of ongoing. I know they were in prior for sort of other uh, reasons, but it's been going on. We almost purchased it last summer, but uh, Mike and Ashley ended up uh, taking it over then. But they had contacted me last, it was past January, about part. They knew I was interested back then. They just, they didn't have the capital to make it work. They couldn't bring in, they couldn't put any product on the shelf. Okay. So, uh, so we, uh, they contacted me, worked something out, and looking to take it over. We live right across the street, 157 Turner Road, the store is at 160. Um, so we kind of know the history of the store, and we used to see how it, when it was running, but it was, it was, it was a very handy store for the neighborhood, you know, talking with the neighbors. Uh, there was talk last summer when it, it fell apart, the prior owner was going to leave. There was talk that if the owner of the building couldn't find somebody for the store, that he was thinking about making it condos. The neighborhood down there, we didn't, we didn't want that. We want a store there, we need a store there, it's very handy. We need a, a filled store though, that was the problem. So, uh, we're going to invest a bunch of capital in there, we're going to fill it up. We, uh, we had a big marketing weekend, we, we, we had uh, big flyers going on. <coughs> Three mile radius, uh, about 6,000 homes we hit, letting them know the store's back and what it's going to have. It's going to have everything, it's going to be a full store. Uh, the manager has worked there on and off for about 18 years, Tammy uh, Stanton. She's very well known, very well liked throughout the board of health department here. And a, a lot of, she's well known throughout the, uh, the town. And people are uh, really happy with her. She's going to be back managing full time. My wife's going to be there. And <coughs> I'll be in and out stocking shelves. So making a complete circle like what I did when I came out of high school. So, uh, but it is. We're going to try to fill it with everything. Um, we kind of had like a, a, a soft grand opening the weekend um, along with Mike and Ashley, where they, they were there. But we filled the store and the, uh, the turnout was tremendous. And um, everybody is really excited in the neighborhood that it's gonna be a filled store. Ice cream window, the ice cream window the other night was lying down the street, we had three people making ice cream. We're gonna have the full belly, um, meats to buy, uh, all kinds of grocery supplies, cleaning supplies, tools, everything that a general store has, so it's basically a one, one store to go to for the people in that area. Uh, so they're really, really excited about it. And it, it basically turned out to be a, a marathon meet and greet that we were there <coughs> 17 hours from 6 to 10 for three days. Because people want to know who the owners were, they wanted to thank us for what we did to the store. It, they kind of think it fell out of the sky overnight. It kind of changed it. I got got it painted inside and out in one day. Had all the uh, trucks and groceries and everything brought in, scheduled to bring in at certain times, so we didn't instruct its traffic and stuff. And we, we packed the store. Um, so people just they, they couldn't believe they were there yesterday. There's nothing here now. It's a full store and everything. So everybody was really excited all in there. We put chairs and tables outside. People sitting down. It was nice to see you know fathers and daughters sitting outside having ice cream, smiles on their face. Um, so it was a lot of excitement. It was. It's like I was very surprised. So. Well, so that's what we're here for, and that's who we are. My only question was the hours. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. You know, it doesn't really make any difference to me. I was just kind of curious, and you know. Well, it's what you know. We've, we're kind of basing things on what the neighborhood wants. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find out what they'd like us to bring into the store, what, what doesn't sell. 
um, he's talked to people, the, the managers, like I said, Tammy has been there for many years. She kind of knows what the store needs, what it does. Um, we've asked, we're asking, and he's doing a lot of talking over the weekend, what people wanted. So we're kind of going to base it on that, and then obviously, whatever the, uh, the rules are. But it was pretty much 6 to 10 in the uh, peak months, and then uh, weekends at 7. We open at 7, I think 7 to 9, I believe is what the hours were. And then the winters, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. We'll have some, we'll tweak the hours in the winters accordingly. Okay. Um, John? Oh, my. No. Uh, just the hours as you answer the question, actually. Right. Yeah. So on the weekends, it's 7 a.m. to 9 p.m.? 7, I believe, to 9. nine. So 6.30 in the morning till um, 9 during the week, and at the weekend, it's, it's 10. 7. 9 30. Oh, 9 30. But then okay. it's going to, I mean, 7 to, 7 to 9. Okay. But then the, in the season, gotcha. it's probably going to be later. Right. Okay. All right. I'm tweaking that to see how it goes. I'm going to just kind of do some, you know, a little study, see when the, the check the tapes, mm -hmm. see when things are being sold. It's late hours, if nothing's sold. <coughs> All right. Right. Good. I don't have any further no. question. It sounds great. And once again, good luck. I, Wish you the best. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it's going to work out, I think. Good. But it's going to take a lot some of interest. A lot of interest. A lot of happy people down in that area. They made a lot of friends over the weekend. Good. 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 So, so that was it. You'll be putting some hours in. I can guarantee you that. Can I have a motion? If sure. I I'll move to grant a common vehicular license to Sand Hills General Store LLC. Mm -hmm. um, do we need? I assume we need the hours, though, right? I don't you? think in a common vic. Nope, not in common okay. vic. All right. Are there any? Are there any hours? Is there, is there any uh, limits on how early can open or how late it can stay open too? Is there any? No, not not know? if you have a liquor license. Don't I have mean, a liquor license attached to it. Okay. So you're good. Great. Uh, motion to second. Second. All right. Motion to second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next is, this, is a discussion and vote for an emergency sewer tie-in. I just see one of our members from the Board of Health come in. Steve, are you expecting anyone else? Uh, no, Jennifer's going to be right now. Okay. <coughs> and then I was looking ahead. I don't know if we could we jump. Yeah. Yeah. It, we're ten minutes early. Does that matter <coughs> to you, Steve? No, it should be okay. Okay. Yeah. One second, see. Let me just get to it. should be down in a second. After this agenda item is taken care of, you'll go to page 91. Okay. Just for a reference. Thank you, sir. We have that, Steve. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. He's not going to be here, so. <laughs> you want to. Wait for Jennifer, Steve? Yeah, if you could. All right. Okay. I know we're a few minutes early. All right. So you know it's me. Does everyone know Steve Pianzi on the Board of Health? No. Oh, I'm Hi. sorry. Hi. I would, uh, Steve. Steve pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Good to see you, Steve. How are you, Mike? Good. You guys know each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we go way back. <laughs> That's way early, Jennifer, so that's great. Thank you. Thank you for Appreciate adjusting it. your schedule. So uh, <coughs> an emergency sewer tie and I had a little discussion with our secretary earlier today, uh, as well as um, like a local attorney who's not here, but uh, it kind of filled me in. And I then with Steve. Could you, um, well, our sewer main is on Merritt Lane, correct? Yeah, it's a sewer, it's on Merritt and it's on Rachel. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the ones on Park have gone through people's backyards via Paper Streets. But behind this house, the two people have uh, aggregated the Paper Streets right. into okay. their lots. Um, <coughs> so we're at Titanic Sewer. I mean, the soil is ridiculous. It's pretty hard. <laughs> it's solid. No, no they, uh, when it was there, um, they pumped it more than four times a year. And there were some backups and some overflows. There's nobody there now. There's water, but it's got to have a system of some kind. 
so the solution is town sewer or a tight tank, and they both uh, end up in the same place. So, um, yeah, Phil discussed it with Dan Smith, and um, it essentially will be mostly in the right of way for the small portion of asphalt um, disturbed to get to the minimum if it goes that way. So which way is it going, Jennifer? I'm it's sorry. Going towards me. It's fine. Um, it's going to cover. Is it going to go down? Street. Is it going to go down Park, or is it going to go through the paper? The. It's the going to go. It's going to go down and out. Uh, a right. A merit. A. Um, I just forgot. No, it's going to go down Park to Maple. Maple. You see a little circle on Maple in the corner right here. Yep. <clears throat> That's the manhole. That's the It'll manhole. connect to. Okay. That's wrong. So it's, we're not going to use the Paper Street at all. Well, no, they incorporated it into the yard. That's why there's a solid line there. There's two houses that are going to Is that the continuation of Situat Ave, that Paper Street, John? Yeah, it's a it's, it's lot less land than the house. Up to Park Ave. Right. And um, when Merritt was put in, I think they somehow. You can see the somehow, paper streets where the solid line is now coming. Yep. No, I see it. It looks like they somehow. Um, extinguish the easement or the roadway. I don't know how, but they did, and uh, or they did. I don't know if they did or not. But regardless, that's what's here. So, um, so that what they're going to do is they're going to go down from number 14 Park Ave, go all the way down to the very end um, where Maple Lab meets, where number two is, and that's the manhole. Correct. What are they? What, what type of material? What type of pipe are they going to put down from that house to Maple? Whatever that. The spaghetti line. It's a private line. It's going to be their line. This is just this is just going down a, a, a wrong slippery slope. These are private lines in a public way. I've said it once before. <coughs> Can we make them put a six-inch line, eight-inch line? Did you say a developer bought this and there's no Title Five? No, there isn't Title Five. It's failed. It's failed. Yeah. Okay. It, but they bought it. But they bought it. The house changed hands. March thirty first. Right. So there was no Title Five. They just bought it as is. No, we make them do a Title Five because it's a sewer connection. Wouldn't a bank make them do that though, Jennifer? No, if it was a if it was a bank. It depends on how they buy it. If they buy it as is, it's right. as is. Right. Well, that's my point. Yeah, that's my point. I know where you're going with that. I know exactly your point. Okay. We're going to have spaghetti lines all over the place, and then when we fail, we're going to have a big mess. That's, that's my problem. So, Jennifer, or, or Steve, yes. everything else around here is sewered. So, is so there... There's only lines. five houses on the whole lot. I understand that. So, why wasn't this house tied previous to the sewer if the other dozen all around it have been tied in previously <coughs> so how did all these other abutting properties connect through an emergency tie-in or a spaghetti line um, yes no, not all of them I don't some of them I think I think some of them connected before my time um, and some some I think did connect through the backyards where they could when on a, on a couple of um, connections, and um, I know. Um, Didn't one of them get connected through Shadwell? Yeah, that's what it looks like. This one here, or right. one of these two. Right. We had somebody come in on Park Ave. Yeah, they did. More than one. Remember that new house that was built, and they didn't have a septic system, and they they had to go into Shadwell. They had to go through the end of Shadwell and get easements and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a mess. So yeah, my concern is is that if these are all spaghetti lines or tie-ins that aren't going into a main and are all sort of um, bushwhack through, and they're in s to to Sean's question, and that they all have small pipes instead of a larger main, then it's really quite a matrix going on there in terms of flow. And I and I and I couldn't agree more with the soil sample that Steve has there. Um, you know, and again, I think we've had this, you know, why wasn't this one of the priority districts? Run the 8-inch main down there and connect it, you know, the, the houses that are on there, do it right, and it's done, you know? That's my, my problem is the liability down the road. That's my issue. Well, they own it. They're responsible for it. That's the, 
way the DPW goes. Sure they I are. made him do right. the, the deed restriction and all of that. 20 years from now, two homeowners later, someone might not have the money to fix it. Then what do we do? The homeowner that owns it can't fix it. Right. Then what do we do? You know, they don't have the, the yeah, We can down the house and make a move. That's, I just yeah, have a that's, question. It's not, it just, it's not, whatever. The, Go ahead. My question is that the, the testing, and I was going through a lot of the documentation, many, many pages, but the, the house just changed ownership on March 31st. So the testing and stuff went on probably, what, in February? I mean, and, and it obviously it failed, right? February into March. So it failed Title V. I, it failed for, for several reasons. Correct. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't just the soils, it failed for pumping. Right. And it failed for ground I mean, obviously, I know the neighborhood very well, but um, it's been vacant for a period of time. Mm -hmm. Just curious as to, as to the. That's the reason why the developers scooped it up. Right. How did the Board of Health, was there any, was it unanimous? Or how it was, was it? Not. It was two, three. Two, no. two, two, one. Two, two, one. two, two to one. And what the reasons the for, I'm sorry, Sean. No, no, we were going to ask the same The reasons for no tie tank? Oh, I was going to ask that question. Um, we discussed it. We, we certainly discussed it. Um, but we had seen how all the other houses in the surrounding area were connected to sewer. And, you know, the way that, that we had looked at to screw down the end of the street to where that exits to where the manhole is, um, two out of three of us. We, uh, we did so in essence then if we're looking at and I'm just looking because I this is what I was trying to figure out where the sewer made when uh, when I was preparing now I understand it's not in Park Ave basically then what we're we're suggesting to everybody else on Park Ave is that if they need a spaghetti line they should be able to get it that's what we're saying well that's our precedent there's only one more house you're looking at and that's the one that's right next to well no I'm, I'm the ones across the street there's I'm one two the three street, yeah. potentially three more so we're looking at like there's Four eight, more potentially, eight, eight, and then everybody gets sewered. Well, what happens, John, is if this line is run, Phil and Jennifer know this. If this line's run, all right, this guy spends the ten or fifteen thousand to run it. Now the neighbor across the street needs to tie in, so they make it today, well for a fee. Yeah. So he's gonna, you know, they work that up, up amongst themselves. Yeah. And then he, because that, believe it or not, a two inch line is enough for a couple, two or three houses or something. Fill that. I don't know. It all depends on. The inch and a half line is good for three more, two more houses. So, a total of three houses on the inch and a half line. Right. And there are, the houses up towards Merrick are tied in by, by uh, spaghetti lines also. They go directly to Merrick. I can show you mm -hmm. these houses. That. That's a spaghetti line. That's a spaghetti line that goes up in here, and I believe that also that goes up to the man. Turner, on Turner. On Turner, uh, not Turner. Merritt, uh, Merritt turns. They don't. None of them go up to Shadwell. Shadow, one from yes. Shadwell. Yes. Over here. Yes. That one goes yep. to Shadwell. That goes right to the easement through the slot. So Maple is really the only one that has the main line running down. That has a main line. This has a main line. Okay, this on development. Okay. Yeah. Would it, uh, you know, and I've always been dead against tight tanks. And when Trisha came in and I heard and I couldn't have disagreed more. You know, she's in her previous towns, you know, thinks they work. I just think it's, you know, it's kind of, it's very unfortunate to have a tight tank. But in a case like this, think about it for a little bit. You know, if this house does go on a tight <coughs> tank, okay, and maybe one or two others have to, and then when it's done right and the town runs the main, they abandoned their tight tanks. You know, how expensive is it for a tight tank? You know, is it the same cost as what it is for a spaghetti line? Okay, a tight tank has to be designed for five days flow. Okay. Which, let's say they conserve water and they only pump it three times a month. It's probably gonna run them about 600 bucks a pump because it's such a big tank. How big a tight tank you're well, talking about? Say it's 2,500 depending on how bedrooms. So then 600 times three times a month. Jesus. That's pretty expensive. $600 or, you know. Um, 
Anyone else? That's eighteen hundred a month is what you're looking. This is slated to right? town store at some point. Yeah, possibly we're, we're yeah. looking at that now yeah. i think that's what we're looking at now trisha are we to see what areas yeah the board's going to be looking at that i mean what the board is trying to do or at least since mr bangan has come and me is not to exacerbate a situation that has created a whole bunch of problems for us um and you know all of martha's vineyards on a tight tank you know <laughs> several areas in in cape cod are that's reality but i understand the financial challenges but, but that's the problem is that by allowing this, you're going to open it up for the other ones to come in, mm -hmm. as this gentleman just said. And um, spaghetti lines are not healthy for our system. It's, we're caught between a rock and a hard place. But um, well, I, I just I, I do have a question. I understand exactly what you're saying, though. But by looking at this, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with an S on it. That, uh, that means that there was already seven on sewer spaghetti lined, I'm assuming. And um, why wouldn't those houses have done it already? Done what? You mean tapped into the town? They have. Correct. Uh, <coughs> well, the ones without an S on them do not. Oh, they have not. Correct. Right. Now, I don't know. Maybe they're getting rid of the cell. Maybe they're, I don't know. They're I'm in presume, each individual situation. I'm going to presume that they probably have like a, um, a um, what do you call it? Not a cess, a cesspool that predates 1994 when Title V came into existence. Right. And so they probably haven't sold their home. That's, that's what I'm saying is we don't know the, the situations of those houses. Yeah. But they could be up for sale. There could be an elderly person that, you know, the house might go on the market. I mean. I know. The difficulty is, is that whatever, the way I see it is whatever we do here, then I see no reason why we shouldn't give it to the other people which means we could have spaghetti lines all over that place, which means it's going to be a huge mess. And I never thought of what Sean was saying, which is obviously if, if we grant one, then somebody could tap in to that same line. Uh, do they still come before us or no? I don't know the answer to that one. I think they, just they go, do. They go the to the Board of Health, health right? <laughs> no, you still have to grant the tie-in, but all the infrastructure would already be laid, and you'd, they'd just be requesting the tie-in, not the laying of the pipe and everything. I mean, you still ultimately have to approve a connection. Yeah, because they're, they're still the connected. Fees. And the liability of what yeah. you're saying, that if something fails, who's going to clean it, who's going to fix it? Um, but Well, it's the same with this, uh, somebody's septic system. We go after them. It's a little different. Yeah, but these are on public property though. It doesn't matter. They have they have ownership of the of the line. You're essentially giving them an easement to go through, you know, the layout <coughs> to get to the land hole. All right. So Those basically the clay is such that you can't you can't even put a mounted system in? No. Above ground. The soil's too hard, right? I was I only mean, thinking to excavate the, and put the, soil the in. The innovative systems have a limit of ninety minutes an inch. Yeah, I know the soil's pretty bad at, in that area, firsthand. <laughs> you remember this when we're having the sewer phase just I, I'm not, I know. That's why I'm looking at it going, you know, if I mean, if this, this seems all makes sense. lines, it's sort of looking at, yeah. Well, it's almost like Ann Vinyl was a mess. Right. Um, I don't know. Well, it's up to the board, whatever, whatever you think. I think just by granting this, like you said, we have others that, you know, will soon follow. The other thing is, you know, at some point, you know, the sewer system is going to, you know, reach its capacity, and then we're going to be saying no to people that have been in their homes for a long time. This person swoops in, buys this house, and gets a tie-in right away. Well, I think um, at the point where your agreement says you have to start saying no, there's still an out at that point for emergencies, but you still have to determine what that is. Is there any limit they can, is, what, what, how many bedrooms are currently in this house Two. now? I don't know. Two. Three. There are three in that house. The record says two, but. So in other words, when, once they tie in though, there's no uh, prohibition on expansion of bedrooms. No, right? if you put a, something on it. So Jennifer, you said a developer bought the house. Is the house going to be remained or is it going to be gutted and rebuilt? It's legally a two-bedroom, just so everybody knows. It's going to be rebuilt? Yes. So presumably, how big's the lot? Is it going to be a four-bedroom home? 
three. Three. <coughs> three um, One second, Phil. Yeah. One second. Tricia, will you do? Yeah, it's just I know in the past when the boards looked at spaghetti lines, we looked at we had elderly couples and financial hardship and stuff like this. Where this is a developer that's going to rebuild and enhance the value of the property, which is good for the town, but right. um, which will you know is bigger than the the outflow is going to be increased from what's there now as well. But you know, we've had a lot of people who've done connections and then they've expanded too. So right. mm -hmm. it's. This probably won't, this will probably be it for that house. It's advertised as a two bedroom, but I don't know if that's. Four rooms, two plus there. two bedrooms, one bedroom. Phil, do you want to? Well, even yeah. if, if we had to design a system, yeah. we would have to, um, the minimum design is supposed to be three. three. Right. Unless there's a special deed restriction on it. So. Is it three plus one or just two plus one? When you, oh, you're saying if it's two, it's it's this plus the one. You're right. It's three. That's what you're saying. I'm with you. Yeah, it's always the plus one. I'm with you. All right. What's the? Well, I don't know. I know I, I know I voted for the other lines in the past, and usually it's the urgency. I think the problem that I run into is in, is that usually we try to do it for the benefit of the elderly or, or uh, a hardship situation. The difficulty is usually they end up selling it and flipping it after we voted it. This case, it's already been sold. Somebody's going to buy it, improve the property. They got a problem. It's either we do a tight tank or we put them on sewer through a spaghetti line. Or to prove the it's problem. Not, either choice is not a good, <laughs> it's not the preferred that I would prefer. But um, I know tight tanks are, are terrible. I know I, I don't. I don't agree with tight tanks unless it's up to, if it's absolutely necessary. I just but think it might be a temporary solution because I think you know something needs to be done on the street. Correct. There's that many homes, you know. So I mean, maybe this. Uh, one second, Phil. Uh, you know, maybe this will bring the street up to the uh, top of the list. You know, <coughs> Phil. Yeah. What, what they can do is, is instead of an inch and a half line, put a two-inch line. To do all those five houses, so if they want to all tie in, they don't have to all go to that manhole. Right. Um, and that way, you won't have to worry about putting in a bunch of lines. A bunch right. of lines. Right. Just that one line, and they all tie in. You have one line, makes it too much line. Um, and do about a seven inch and a half. I mean, the good okay. thing about this is that it's, I mean, you've seen requests where they're snaking through three or four backyards with easements from all the neighbors. This is almost, as Jennifer said, as good as you can get. In the right. Right. As good as, I mean, it's a right. clear shot as opposed to what we've seen in the past. Right. All right. I'll, um, if there's, is there any more discussion, I'll accept a motion, I guess. Everyone. I'll move to approve an emergency sewer connection for parcel ID 39-22-003-F, providing they put a two-inch pipe um, on Park Ave to the sewer main on Maple. Okay. Motion in a second. Second. Got a motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. Page 91, did you say, Tricia? Yes, sir. Next is a uh, presentation. Let's see if I have this right. Yep, for the school building committee update. And uh, John, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having us. We do appreciate it. John and uh, engineers and architects have, I don't want to steal your show here, but this is your fifth sixth time presenting these uh, final four projects. You guys have spent a lot of time on this. Uh, Rich Hebert's been there and, and many and many others. So. Yep, it's been a long process and the feasibility study is, is coming to a conclusion and we're getting to the point now where we're going to have to select one of our alternatives <coughs> to move forward to MSBA to hopefully get into the schematic design phase. So we're here tonight, two purposes. One, to give you a very brief update. And we've been before you before, and this is just, again, a quick update on, on kind of the alternatives. Answer any questions you might have, and also, you know, get your, your general consensus or ideas on what, you know, where you think uh, this should be heading. We're, we're getting as much public feedback as we can 
before we make a decision that will likely come before the school committee on June 9th. So we only have a few weeks left. What you see up here on the screen is the idealized plan. Um, this, be, this came out of our visioning work that started back in June. It was 45 uh, people who participated in that visioning. We had an educational planner who worked with us, Dr. Frank Locker, on developing a vision for the future of the Citra Public Schools. And so out of that vision came the idealized educational plan for 21st century school. So that's essentially what you see up here on the screen. And just briefly touching on a few of these elements. Um, first of all, this is a six through eight uh, middle school. Uh, currently Gates is grade seven and eight. Our idealized model is for a six through eight middle school. Uh, to the left, and this would be a two-story option, I should say. So on the left side would likely be the sixth grade um, team stacked on top of one another. So you'd have one on the first floor, one on the second grade. Sixth grade being slightly separated from grades seven and eight. In this model, what you see is you see uh, basically pods of classrooms where you would have um, essentially all of the specials that would be related to a team such as art or robotics and engineering integrated w among the teams. So those red areas that you see are, are typically what we refer to as specials. The blue areas are traditional, more traditional classrooms. The sort of light pink areas are special education. And, and what, what you get out of this model is that what we're trying to accomplish is the full integration of all, all of the um, major academic areas and specials into one common core. The, the future being that, that no subject is taught in isolation, that there's, they're taught in collaboration, with one another and students see the relationship between one subject and another. It's true 21st century uh, visionary planning. And so that's what, that's what our model is. So you see that you know, elongated um, stretch there. You've got six on then seven and eight. Um, again, replicating itself, that same design. In the middle, a couple things to point out. Uh, you have the um, Heller up stairs. Uh, that's a stair that would go to the second floor, but also would serve the dual purpose of being a performance area. Those stairs you can actually sit on. Um, there's areas where you climb up, but it's also like stadium seating. So you could have presentations and performances um, down below that area. That is a sort of, again, a new sort of visionary model in education trying to take advantage of space, a very big space that you could use in multi-purpose ways. And so that's what's called the Heller upstairs. So that's what we propose for the middle of the building. You also see in the front, you see the gymnasium, the locker rooms, administration, the kitchen, a general cafeteria would be all up and around that Heller upstairs. Um, the public areas, as we call them, could be closed off from the other educational areas. So, you know, for public use purposes, that general central area uh, could serve the public as well even while school is in session. You have the ability to sort of close off sections of this building. The whole goal was to make it as adaptable and flexible as we could. You build a building, we're trying to build a building not necessarily <coughs> for today, certainly not for yesterday, but for 50 years in the future. And to try to be able to adapt to education over 50 years is a real challenge. That's the challenge we've put before the architects they listened to our vision, they listened to our educational plan, and then they turned around and tried to translate that into designs on three sites that we were looking at. The current gate site, including the gates building itself, because we have to look at an addition renovation option. We are required to do that. So that had to be one of the options. Uh, we're we're going to show you the new uh, gates uh, on gate site, but a brand new building, which would mean the demolition of the existing gate school. And we'll also show you a co-located model which attaches the new middle school to the high school and actually use some of the high school space as part of the middle school sort of efficiencies in that regard. And finally, we'll show you um, the plan on the Ellis site as well, actually located with a potential um, public safety complex. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Don Walter from Dawn Whittier and he will sort of walk you through the four options. Great. Before, Don, yep. before you yep. start, can I just ask a quick question? Yep, right ahead. <clears throat> what areas are shared through the students six, seven, and eight? Is it all but the blue 
Well, again, in six, they're, they're set up in teams. So number one, you would primarily stay within your, your <coughs> team pod. So um, if you are a seventh grader, where Don is right now, as a seventh grader, hopefully much of what you would need would be right in that pod. Above you would be another seventh grade team, and you potentially would share with them as well. So an up and down kind of format. As far as those central areas, the gymnasium, the, 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 you know, the, the band and chorus, which we didn't talk much about, would be a black box theater. That area would be shared by all of the students. So all of the students essentially would be you know, going in and out of that central core area, um, is what you would say. OK? All right, thank you. Sorry. You're welcome. Go ahead, Don. Great. Well, this is thank you. Thanks, John. So uh, essentially what we've done is we've taken 13 options and whittled them down to four semifinalists, which will ultimately be voted on and presented to the MSBA. So we're going to start with the gate site and start with the addition and renovations options. Uh, as a way of orienting you uh, to the site, First Parish Road and Cudworth here, this is the in existing uh, loop that comes to the front of the building and the main entrance located here. The way our colors are set up is the orange would be existing to be renovated, blue would be new. Uh, based upon this drawing, there's not a much existing left to be renovated in the addition renovation option. We looked at a number of different approaches, and what we found, be because of all of the, the levels within that building, because it was originally built as a high school, which became a junior high, and is now running a middle school model, that it wasn't feasible to renovate the Gates building to make it a 21st century school that John just described. So what we've done is we, we're saving the iconic main entrance to the building that everyone knows in terms of its imagery, and we're saving the 9,000 square foot gymnasium, which is 3,000 square feet larger than what MSBA would allow with their, their standards that we need to follow. So in this case, we, we get the benefit of the, the building's imagery and the large gymnasium. Beyond that, uh, what we've done is we've set up these uh, learning commons, as John just talked about in the idealized plan, with sixth grade being uh, somewhat separate from the seventh and eighth grade, and then all of the specials, your arts, your music, your robotics, all being intermingled within those uh, pieces and the cafeteria and the library located just beyond. The way the site works, uh, the buses would actually come in the, uh, the main entrance and utilize this loop. We would close off this little spur row, which takes you down to what has become five corners, which is kind of a dangerous inter intersection, and just dedicate this to buses uh, coming and going. We would take and allow the parents to come in off of Cudworth and loop around this way and back out. And you can see the primary parking for the school would be uh, located out back also. So you have a main entrance for the bus in the front and a <coughs> secondary entrance for the students to get dropped off in the back coming around a, a central lobby. Also within this particular option, uh, what we've done is we've taken what's located down here, the Little Red Schoolhouse, and we've relocated it uh, back up to First Parish Road. Our understanding is that it was originally located up there and then moved to the back of this site. We're actually meeting with the Historic Commission uh, on the 28th to discuss that. Uh, as a possibility, but the initial feedback is that it, it might be a positive uh, to the project. Um, you can see we end up with one uh, large athletic field, and we maintain, actually rebuild, and uh, recreate the, uh, the tennis courts uh, on the site here. And lastly, uh, kind of a hallmark of all of the options is we're trying to create indoor-outdoor uh, classroom environments. So outside each of the learning communities or learning commons, We've created an outdoor space, which is still somewhat protected, but allows the students to spill out uh, onto the site uh, and beyond. So that gives you a sense of the addition renovation option. We can take questions now. We can just keep moving and whatever your pleasure is. I just have one quick question, Don, if I may. The sure. new part in the upper right-hand quadrant, the yellow, do you know approximately how much square footage that is? The existing gym. That's the gym. Is that the gym? That's oh, the existing gym. The other way. Okay. Yep. This is the uh, existing gym. Right. So, so then take me across to the the left, um, the furthest most to that. I guess it would be, um, yeah, right there. Approximately how much square footage is that? The that existing A wing. Is that part of the? A no, no, right there. Just, right just this piece here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, gosh, enough top right here for this. A couple thousand square feet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all new construction. Right, I understand that. It's probably about a couple thousand square feet. A couple thousand. Okay, thank yeah. you. Can I Plus just... Lines. So, uh, the question I had asked at the last meeting was, what would be 
least disruptive to the students, obviously this would This be, is the most disruptive. Uh, without a doubt. Any, uh, any ideas what you'd do? Yeah, this would probably have to be a phasing. Um, you'd probably look at building sections of this, moving students in, tearing down another section, building another. Um, this is probably the most <coughs> complicated in terms of phasing that we would phase. Probably would be a three to five year project, disruptive to education, right. and um, it, a real challenge. We don't have a place to put all of our, our students. Right. So you really have no other, no other building in town where we could move our students and continue education and not hurt the existing education for those seventh and eighth graders. I just, I knew the answer, yeah. but I just had, I wanted yeah. to hear you say it publicly. It's, it's a great question. I, I should have brought that up. In, in terms of the way it may be constructed, uh, anyone familiar with the building knows that this is a wing which comes off the back where students get dropped off. C wing, which is what reaches out to the front, that one story piece, then, then B wing in the middle. We would probably be able to build this wing first, move the A wing students perhaps into that and then come back and build that and then move these students back into, into there and so forth. So, uh, you know, pretty disruptive uh, construction as John mentioned. It certainly adds time and time adds money. So, great, great Sorry. question. Okay. Uh, the new option uh, on, the, uh, on the existing gate site, uh, if you remember, we're just looking at where the existing building is located, the gymnasium. The existing gym is located right about here. Uh, this is essentially the idealized plan that you, uh, that you saw first uh, up on the screen, rotated 90 degrees with the 6th grade uh, commons, 7th grade, and 8th grade located along the, uh, the back, essentially running down this side property line back towards the Little League field. Uh, in the back corner and then all of the the shared the the uh, gymnasium administration kitchen cafeteria all located on this uh, this wing here with in this case the parents coming in off of first parish dropping off and looping back out coming in a main entrance here buses coming in off of cudworth uh, looping around and back out students coming in uh, on this lower part of the plan gathering in the uh, in the center with this option, because we don't know uh, what the disposition may be of the historic uh, commission, we've left the Little Red Schoolhouse uh, in its current location. When you do that, as you can see, you, you lose uh, those tennis courts that we showed on the uh, previous option and end up uh, essentially just with uh, a multi-purpose field and perhaps a basketball court uh, or two. If we were able to uh, relocate the Little Red Schoolhouse up to this end of the site or somewhere along First Parish, we could recapture some of those uh, tennis courts that we showed on the uh, on that initial option. Well, that's that's the new option uh, on the gate site. Uh, much less disruptive. Uh, still construction going on. Essentially, what we could do because this is this wing is located essentially where the existing C wing is. You can build two grades <coughs> plus all of the core facilities as part of a phase one. Move the seventh and eighth grade into the building and then tear down the existing building and build this, uh, this last wing and then ultimately move the uh, sixth grade into the building. So it would take a little while to get the sixth grade <coughs> one, but ultimately less disruptive than the previous one. Yep. Right. But you lose the character of the building, the totally. whole building. Well, I mean, unless, unless we recreate it. it. Unless you right. recreate right. in the design. Yep. Yes. So that's the new on the uh, existing site. Uh, next option we go to is the Ellis a state site and as you know there are 22 acres uh, that the school department uh, school committee controls uh, located on the corner of route 3a and manlot road uh, the other building that you see here in site development is six of those acres uh, the public safety project has been allowed to study uh, as part of their uh, their work so we've shown what a public safety building would look like uh, on that site also in conjunction with uh, a new Gates uh, Middle School building. Essentially the worst case uh, scenario if you're talking about buildings and development uh, on the site. Uh, the access to um, the new middle school would be off of Manlot Road, uh, which in itself is, is a bit challenging given the, the, uh, the narrowness of Manlot and uh, the fact that there are no sidewalks out there. We expect there might be some development occurring on Manlot Road, at least from the entrance out to 3A perhaps down towards Country Way also. Uh, the way you access the site, again from Manlot, parents would come in and around, drop off at a main entrance here, and loop back out. Buses would come in, 
drop off at a uh, secondary entrance, loop around, and come back out. Same thing. This is the ultimate idealized plan uh, that John showed you to begin with, with main entrance and secondary entrance and the gathering space in the middle, and then sixth grade common, seventh grade, and eighth grade, all two stories with the outdoor uh, learning environments uh, uh, going beyond. Multi-purpose field and a basketball court in this case. If public safety building were to go here, uh, we are showing a wooded buffer uh, to separate the two. There is also the possibility for development of some or all of this uh, for more courts uh, or something to that effect. This if one requires sewerage, obviously brought up there. If the school yep. was built there, we would have to have sewerage. Yeah, there was, there was a separate sewer study that was done. The cost to bring it up there was just under $2 million. We actually looked at doing on-site septic here also, but because of the population, it would actually be a sewage treatment plant. Uh, so the cost of the development of the plant uh, may even be more than the cost of bringing the sewer up, and then you have your annual operating cost uh, attached to that. I don't think I've heard the question asked. If we went on this site, could you, would you, entertain the idea of a model school? Well, one of, the, one of the issues right now with MSBA, and they've been very clear on this, is that um, model schools are not necessarily the favorite choice. Um, if we are going to go to a model school, MSBA has told us, if that's our recommendation, that we will need to do a, they will do a further review of that, taking three to six months as another study to review whether, in fact, a model school is truly the best option for, for situate. We're moving a little way. MSBA is moving a little bit away from the model school, right, yeah, no, and, and understandably so, and some of the reasons why they're doing that. But you know, which I, I won't go into all of them. But in, in essence, model school is not off the table, but it's certainly not something that um, we're considering right now. And quite frankly, our educational visioning, uh, the model school wouldn't work for us. What we, the type of school we develop, that model school is is outdated as far as we're concerned. So uh, we, we really do want to go in, in what we believe will be a model 21st century school. Um, so. Don, just to recap, you said yep. this is the most difficult one to build? No. Uh, this, this site is actually Less uh, the least disruptive to build on. Obviously, you are clearing a, a wooded area for it to occur. And the cost of the, bringing the sewer up or an on-site sewage treatment plant uh, we have to be house, incorporated. How, how close are we to the house property line? The um, Ellis. In terms of the, uh, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's back here. Considerably. Yes, yeah. So it's not. Yep. Yes. In another comment at, at one of your public forums a couple of meetings ago when you had asked the audience to pick a favorite, did you say they had concerns about having the safety complex in the same area as the school? It, it, and I would think, and, <coughs> I don't think that could be a positive thing, but they looked at it as a... Some people did. I mean, yeah. I think that's, that, that's a split, split decision. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. there are some people who look at having public safety on the same site as beneficial. I mean, I, I look at it from my perspective. I happen to like it there from a safety standpoint. I mean, I like it now that the public safety is out in front of the high school. Right. I mean, the response right. time is no better. You can't get any better than that if we need somebody in an emergency. So from a safety standpoint, I actually, I favor that, but there are some people in our public sessions we've heard from that would prefer that maybe it not be there and that space be used more for fields and to expand field usage and, you know, saying there's a shortage of fields in situated, maybe that would be a place where you could put some fields, maybe maintain a little bit more green space and not lose <coughs> as, mu as many trees. So, you know, again, we've heard, we've heard mixed on that, but that has been out there as a, as a public concern. One thing with the public safety also, when we first developed the option out here working with the chiefs, uh, the, the building itself was located close, closer to the intersection of Manlot, and through our study we discovered that there is a wetland uh, that has developed over time due to a uh, stormwater uh, drainage from Route 3A located in this corner here and a smaller wetland here. I've had some just preliminary conversations with uh, conservation and certainly we can't just do away with the wetlands, but especially this one, I think there's some leeway in, in mitigating and or replicating on the, uh, on the site. Uh, and, and also we did find uh, more wetlands in this back corner than was originally shown on the uh, Mass GIS maps. Do you have a concern about the single entrance exit of it? Yes. 
Uh, we, we actually, when we did the original plan, when uh, public safety was located in the corner, we did have a, a separate egress coming out onto 3A, uh, either could be used as emergency egress or possibly bus uh, egress. You know, it's interesting in, in developing the public safety plan, uh, we're very concerned about that also what, as, when it pertains to the public uh, coming to the building and uh, there will be a community room and, and training opportunity. So it's set up so it's only one way in uh, for the public and then egress out onto Manlot Road. The only individuals or personnel that will be egressing onto 3A would be fire apparatus or police vehicles uh, leaving the site. So we're very cognizant of, of 3A and trying not to create more egress points onto the road. So is there a reason then that in, you didn't make the entrance, the main entrance to the middle school through that way you have that multi-purpose uh, field now, which would seem to provide, you know, not some of the challenges with the narrowness of man lot. It, it, it is something, if this became the preferred option, that we could study further. Uh, part of the issue with the num number of vehicles that come to the site in the morning especially is creating basically uh, a, a turning situation, turning uh, uh, from the l turning left coming from the north, which there would be fewer cars there, but there would still be some. Uh, having that intersection essentially along with the man lot intersection here, we're trying to minimize the number of intersections over a, a, a length of distance. And that's essentially what we have now, though, right? In yes, this we do. footprint, we have exactly yeah. that. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. Any option or opt put you this way, looking to go down into the Ellis Estate itself to get to Country Way as another type of exit mm -hmm. urgency or something? Uh, I don't know. We, we suppose that that is a possibility. That land is not in the in the control of the school committee to look at right now but gotcha. uh, certainly I was just saying it's a the first thing that popped into my head sure. was like okay can you get out through the recreational field now you've answered it doesn't make sense I'm like it's like a bottleneck um, safety possibly but bottleneck for traffic coming and going it, it could be a problem so I'm trying to figure ways that you can yeah maybe well, even if you have a second one to the to the right of the first safety. one right. mm -hmm. okay. yeah I see what you're saying have like way. a dual going up in one way that's another option yep yeah, we, 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 we could create a, a one way in and a second uh, way out. But to Don's point, once you get out on the main lot, it's pretty narrow. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. And there'd be a lot of traffic. Um, and then waiting to turn on 3A. Yeah. Obviously, you right. need a light there. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And there's some preliminary discussions that are going to be taking place between uh, police and Mass DOT uh, about all of this. Okay. And then finally, uh, this is smaller because this, the scale is smaller. We're trying to show you, show you more site. This is the existing uh, high school site. Again, to uh, orient you, uh, this is uh, Route 3A, the intersection of uh, First Parish Road. We're right here in Town Hall, Fire Station 3 and Police Station located here. High school main entrance off of Route 3A. Uh, that secondary entrance where the buses are currently parked. Uh, located here off of uh, First Parish. Again, blue is new, uh, orange is, uh, is renovated. Uh, in this case, we've introduced a purple color, which we'll explain here in a minute. The, uh, the way we, we access the site and keep them, them separate, the buildings are, are, are joined. As you can see, they are connected, uh, but they are substantially separate in terms of the way the buildings function. The, uh, the middle school uh, access would be off of First Parish with parents coming in, dropping off, and going back out, parking being off to the right. want to point out that the uh, uh, Kozlowski <coughs> courts, the uh, inline skate and skate park and tennis courts are all untouched uh, in this option. We're very cognizant of the importance of those, so those remain, uh, remain as is. But when we do put this parking over here, the uh, seaside uh, playground uh, would have to be relocated. So that's your main entrance, uh, parent drop-off main entrance to the middle school here. The uh, other entrance for the buses and for the high school come off of 3A. Buses queue up along this, this long uh, path here with middle school students getting off and coming in this secondary entrance to a main gathering space just like the other options. High school students getting off at their main entrance, buses going back out. The parking that's along uh, this side of the building, uh, opposite the uh, auditorium entrance, gets relocated to the back of the site. There's the former uh, physical plant, which right now is utilized as storage uh, for the high school. Uh, that would get removed 
because uh, the main boiler plant for the high school is actually now over here next to the uh, Kobe Cutler Fitness Center. So that, that parking replaces uh, what would be lost in this, uh, in this particular option. In terms of the building, uh, as I said, this is, this is your main entrance with your 6th uh, grade uh, learning commons, 7th grade, and 8th grade uh, located across uh, this portion of the building. All of your core facilities uh, located in the blue in the middle. This part of the building is actually uh, some one-story construction uh, in the high school right now. It's the art wing, uh, old cafeteria A or senior calf in the, uh, in the recreation department located all down along this portion of the building. We are suggesting that that part get removed. The auditorium structure remain in place. All of the art function then would go into this purple area on the ground floor, which is currently the Early Childhood Center, which is being relocated to the Wampatuck School this summer. So uh, they're able to take this program space and renovate this to become the art wing, which actually creates a better connection back to the rest of the, uh, the high school. The existing auditorium, which right now is undersized, so it's 410 uh, seats within there, would actually get renovated into a uh, band and choral uh, center so the floor be flattened take advantage of the high ceilings and you have a, a basically a music suite uh, set up for the middle school but given its proximity could be used by the high school also uh, but when you take the auditorium away the added benefit is we would suggest uh, constructing a new 750 seat auditorium back adjacent to the entrance to the um, gymnasium so you can have a shared lobby and with all that additional parking, uh, have better access to uh, a, a public entity. So it would be an auditorium with a stage, with a fly loft, uh, things of that nature uh, for not just high school, middle school, but for community use uh, also. So that gives you a general sense of, of the middle school and of the other amenities that, uh, that take place out there. Do want to point out the Vernal Pool, uh, which is a topic of discussion uh, as you can imagine what we're going to do is, is take that Verona pool and enhance it right now it's mowed right up to the edge of the water and when the water disappears in the summertime in the fall actually gets mowed right through uh, the Verona pool what uh, and we've had uh, initial discussions with uh, Conservation Commission about creating a uh, naturalized buffer uh, around that Verona pool and then uh, while <coughs> it, it may be mowed it wouldn't be an active uh, recreational area around outside that buffer those outdoor classrooms we mentioned get a chance to spill out along what would be a, a pervious path and perhaps uh, a point where there can be a dock or a place where students in the spring can get out and take water samples observe egg masses uh, things of that nature the other th um, aspect of this that we're very cognizant of is uh, with conservation they have allowed projects uh, to be built up to 125 feet of the edge of a vernal pool. Um, they have jurisdiction within 250 feet. Uh, our building right now is in excess of the 125 feet here, so we would stay outside of that, uh, that buffer. And it, I think it's fair to say that the conservation was very interested in this plan because we're actually making a situation around the vernal pool now better uh, in the future with this particular project. And from an educational point of view, we're not only allowing students to be outside, but to give them a chance to be in, in a, uh, a naturalized environment and they can have some hands-on learning. A couple other things from this uh, plan you get is you get the flexibility and adaptability to changing uh, enrollments over time. You get a lot more ability to expand and <coughs> into other areas if you needed them. So if the high school got a little bigger or if, or if the middle school got a little bigger over time, you have much greater flexibility here than you do on any of the other uh, plans. The other thing you get is obviously the ability, if you wanted it, to share staff, uh, economies of scale there and sharing staff where you need that. Um, students who, particularly gifted students at Gates who needed to take advantage of uh, courses maybe at the high school, let's say you get an eighth grader, <coughs> basically you know beyond the math that's offered in eighth grade conceivably very easily could could plop them into a ninth or tenth grade uh, math course um, so you could take advantage of that you could take advantage of the mentoring opportunities of high school students with younger students so so from an educational standpoint this co-located model offers you 
some things that the other the other three do not offer. Um, so, and you still get pretty much the idealized educational plan. I think that's most important. What's yeah. best for the students? Yeah. It really drives it home. The only question I have is, will you do a traffic study? I was talking to my wife about it, and she just said, "Oh my God, the traffic's going." Yeah. You know, so you'll look at it further and try to open it up and. Yes, we actually had um, a data collection agency out at the beginning of May uh, doing sampling to, to document the existing traffic, and we should in the next week or so have an initial report back from our traffic engineer, but that was one of our concerns as well. All three of these sites, interesting, present some traffic challenges. Even the existing gate site with that intersection that we, we talked about has some interesting tra traffic challenges. Um, this one will, so we really have to study this carefully in terms of the traffic as well as the man lot 3a site presents some traffic challenges for us don in these the circular area is that void right now in behind the purple there that's good. That's the this right here yeah yes that's that's an outdoor courtyard yeah that's where the ducks live. oh <laughs> Thank you. That's where the ducks, live. ducks exactly. give birth every year there any chance of using that space uh, the, the problem is if, if you did, you'd be taking outside walls from existing classrooms and closing them in. And uh -huh. what we want to do is but keep that natural light in, in the classrooms. John raised a good point, if, if I yeah. can <coughs> go up a little bit further, right yeah. there. Yeah. If you want that, that card is on the outside wall and you could bump into that. Right. Area that's a cafeteria. Right? No, that right, see that, the, um, yeah. the little cafeteria. bump out down below right. here. That's yep. the um, cable, cable television. Oh, right, 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 right. That, that corridor, interestingly, has no classrooms on one side. So it's a second, it's a two-story corridor with only classrooms on one side. If you ever had to expand the high school, let's say, you could easily add eight class, eight to ten classrooms up in that area, two-story, very inexpensively to do. So, you know, this, again, that talks about the flexibility of this, this design, that you have the ability to, to do things within the high school site that you don't have on the other. So, um, you know, again, flexible, adaptable, changing with the times. This one, this one gives you something the other, the other three do not. I guess my only concern, similar to Sean, I mean, we just added 750 people yeah. in an area that's already congested if you drop off your kid there at seven in the morning now yeah. um, you know it's, it seems like it's going to be it seems like ideally the part of the plan that will work the best is to get rid of town hall the fire and the police station right that really opens up that extra space where you can use <coughs> more parking more road access more fields, fields more yeah. mm -hmm. that sort of stuff it seems congested to me but if you did you, to your point tony we've talked about this and obviously we have to show it because it's the existing conditions right. But if, if for some reason they weren't there, if Town Hall did move to the, uh, the former dates in this plan, if, if the, uh, public, the safety. public safety moved up to Ellis site, you know, you, that opens up um, you know, a tremendous area to be used both to improve traffic flow, to put fields in. We've looked at the possibility that two fields could go there. The softball field that can't be built in this scenario could be built in that scenario right. so it does it does you know for the future planning for the master planning of this there are opportunities and the other thing just from the sight lines of you know that 3a intersection with uh, first parish you know you'd have a beautiful brand new school sort of you know the thing you would see over an expanse of green in that scenario It'd be a really attractive um, you know sort of piece for situate to see um, so and Don there's nothing you can do about that vernal pool uh, well, we, we can we, we can enhance it. You know, it, it was certainly it was certainly originally constructed as stormwater detention way way back when, and like what happens with many of these, if they're not maintained over time, they get naturalized and they become a habitat. In this case, it's, it's a very vibrant habitat. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to we're trying to enhance it to turn it into a positive instead of a negative. So that's why right. it's almost like a nature's classroom for us. Mike All right, Mike, uh, Mike, did you have your hand up? I'm sorry, I didn't say it. But well, no, I just wondered, you were talking about it as far as uh, the future and, and what would happen with the building we're in now and fire and, and police. And because as presented, this plan actually decreases the, the athletic fields that are, are in existence because we lose the field right behind us. Uh, so obviously there are pluses and minuses with, with all these plans, but uh, this 
would be, in my view, a big plus only if we could work towards putting the eliminating these three buildings and the cell tower and moving the cell tower and turning this into an attractive entrance to the town feels it would it would mean a lot, but it, it, it this is contingent upon a, a lot of moving pieces right. uh, in the future. So that that's something that has to be considered in my view. Trisha, at one of the last meetings, I promised him would move the cell tower. So that's, <laughs> hope that's okay. <laughs> Piece of cake. Um, I just was going to make one one last comment. The only thing I could figure um, that I'd like to add is, and that's probably we can gain a lot, and I'm sure you together visited other schools to see what worked for other towns and what didn't work and I'm sure that's what everyone's nodding their head and that's what you're taking back to us and, I, and for that I appreciate that um, let's learn from their mistakes and you had showed a lot of John uh, that maybe you and Sarah had gone out to California we were out in California but just Friday we were at uh, we were in Concord New Hampshire and we were looking at schools that were built there and so um, you know we are learning from these are school buildings that were two years old and they were using a lot of the concepts that we're talking about here in our plan right. and um, you know just learning how they're using space and you know in the different ways and it, it was really interesting and again learn from them on some of their mistakes and well, I, things that you know didn't work yeah like you said tonight the model school I thought that was great you know yeah. a month ago but yeah. maybe it's not so great. maybe not so yeah. at this point and, right. and you know and again and we originally went to MSBA I thought we would go model right. probably more likely go model because so many other schools were being built as models right when we did the visioning process, you know, I can honestly say right now the model doesn't fit our vision, you know, and so it probably wouldn't have worked for us anyways. But you're not seeing you're not seeing a lot of new model schools. In other words, model schools breaking ground right now. And what in the very beginning of the discussions <coughs> back last June, you had said something that hit home, and I don't, you know, I, I don't want to repeat it because I'll mess it up. You developed the school from the education. Yeah. Out. So what, yeah. what was the basically the, you know the whole notion is you develop the educational plan first and then design a building to fit the educational plan rather than trying to fit an educational plan in a existing building and that's our challenge with the current case right now is trying to fit an existing a plan an educational plan that doesn't work in that building and so you know we, we, we need a building that can adapt to that plan over a period of time. So. Great. Anyone else have any comments? The only Washington. thing I, I had was um, one was so in this model here, there's a potential you're going to have 11, 12 year olds in connection with 18, 19 year olds all right. in the facility. Right, absolutely. I just, I know that's for the school board and to look at that, it, it just strikes me odd and strange that I'd have my young daughter or my yeah. son at a high school where, you know, they're going to be seniors. And that's, that's I know they're going to be separate and everything, yeah. but. Um, to me, it's a little different than having a sixth grader with a four or five or five-year-old in kindergarten. That's all the difference. Well, I'll tell you from an educational standpoint, because I get that question a lot. Um, I've been in this business 30 years. I've worked in campus situations where uh, middle school is basically almost, without being attached, is right next to an existing high school, um, where kids ride on the same buses. Um, it, it is it works exceptionally well to put those kids together there are so many more positives than there are negatives in terms of the mentoring that goes on in the opportunities um, for potential negatives that people could be concerned about just really don't exist um, Duxbury is opening in September a new co-located middle high school attached uh, Cohasset is been 7 through 12 for a number of years in one building um, Rockland just connected their middle school 5 through 5 through 12 um, with together and Abington is rolling out a plan for 5 through 12 collate located middle high school right now they're about six months ahead of us so it's it's a it's a educational model for the future and um, again for the concerns that parents may have about the mixing th they are kept pretty separate they are safe and again the I would say the advantages of the plan far outweigh some of the potential risks which generally don't play out to everybody's fears and that, that that's a very yeah. common yeah. statement and rich you're about to jump out of your chair I, <laughs> well you know how many years have you taught in this school system and and you know if you have something to say say it yeah. along no, that just, point so <laughs> john hadn't said it i was going yeah. all right okay talk good. about all the communities in the area that are going to this i mean cohasset's had it for years and years and years 
Yeah. And the important thing is it, it works and it works. It does work and it's, you know, and kids are safe and we do everything in, you know, in our, our power to keep kids safe and so it's, um, but I, I understand the risks obviously because, you know, I was a parent too of, of teenagers so I get it, but it's a, uh, um, they'll be safe and again the, the opportunities that these kids would have in this model would far away the disadvantages in my opinion. I'm going to just go to Marty and just a quick question yeah. John is, so as far as the buses running yeah uh, is, is there going to be will the ages be mixed on the buses as well yeah they will be yeah we're, we're planning to do that anyways we're, we're moving towards a two-tier right. bus I, system. I had heard that so yeah. all, next year they're going to be mixed so we're already starting the process we won't have sixth graders on the bus because obviously seventh grade begins at <coughs> gates and you know in most buses quite frankly don't have kids above 10th grade it's mostly ninth grade it's mostly seventh eighth and ninth graders that'll be on buses Ten, some 10, a few 11th and 12th, but those buses, and again, having worked in systems more often than not where the kids were combined, I was in Duxbury for a number of years, they were 6 through 12 combined on the same buses, um, less problems on those buses than you get on a middle school bus, guaranteed. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's because the, it's, a, it's a different culture. Right. When the 8th graders are the oldest people on the bus, it is a different culture. When there's high school uh, students on the bus and the 8th graders are sitting in the front and they're High school students are sleeping in the back. Right. A little better, different <laughs> culture. <laughs> it's a different culture. Great. Um, everyone, everyone all yeah. set? And w does that wrap it up? I don't want to cut you short, Don. Yeah, no, that is it. everything we wanted yeah. to do. Hey, Robin, I'm sorry you had your hand yeah, up. I just, I just wanted to add that um, we've had preschoolers in with the high schoolers for yeah. many years now, and um, that's the farthest you can get in the school system. So I, in not having issues there, I think, I think we'll be okay. Our, our high school kids are great. Yeah. I mean, they really are. Our culture of our high school is phenomenal. And um, I wouldn't say this is a problem. Well, and I'm, I would be very excited. As John said, the mentoring, the tutoring that could go on. You know, I think there could be a real nice relationship built between the two. To, uh, and we've looked and at it, that area. are incredibly adaptable. Right. I think right. parents... More so than we yes, think. Yes, we have more difficulty <laughs> with change than a young person does. That's for sure. <coughs> A lot of good comments. The more I hear about yes. it, the <coughs> Jim, do you have a question? Yeah, with this plan, um, how would you, if you were in the junior high school, how would you get from the junior high school to the high school without going outside? Well, there would be connectors that, again, would be ways that people would, would egress either way, but you would those wouldn't be necessarily pathways that students would go down. If you were, if you were to see the, the Rockland School, because we, we visited Rockland, um, they're connected, so there's, if you need to go into the high school, you can connect and go in, but for the most time, the students stay separate from one another. Yeah, but I'm just saying, there'd be ways in and out, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate all your time, and like I said, Every time I see it, I pick up a few new things. So there you go. I appreciate right. it. Right. I'm, am I missing yep. something? No, no, that's good. I was just going to make a point. I just want to say uh, to Mike Hayes, I know you're stepping off the board for all those years of service and new election. I just want to thank the board, yes. recognize you, and say thank you very much uh, for that dedication for the uh, town of Situate and uh, the school committee. He's so I just want to make sure we recognize right up to him, the so. very end. And, and <laughs> And he's staying on the school building committee too. So he's Is we're not letting him off. Oh, yeah. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any backup for the next thing. The next um, is a discussion of vote for a um, new contract for the 2015 revaluation. And Todd. Yeah. Thanks for being so patient. Uh, oh, that was interesting. It's great. It's you have children. You have children in the system. Oh yeah, right? <laughs> sure do. Todd, uh, I don't have much backup here. It went black. <laughs> black ink. So, can we get into the all three of us distinction yeah, between all, the yeah. business valuation and? I'm sorry. Can we get into the business valuation and commercial and? Talk to explain us maybe yeah, well, um, in detail. Yes. Yeah, we can, um, we can give you know half an hour. Is that, that well? Is good. that enough time, John? I get an hour if you want. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got it right here. John's is he just shut we'll share this. No, Mine, the battery oh, died. No good. This one's not good. Right. Thank you. Does that work?
Right. Okay. We'll get there. You share with them. I'll share with them. All right. Todd, can you give us a little backup, if you don't mind? Yeah, sure. Uh, Todd Glock with the Board of Assessors. Unfortunately, uh, neither of the Steve's or Fred's can be here tonight, so you're stuck with just me. Um, we had a proposal put out for appraisal services to conduct the update of all residential, commercial, industrial, mixed-use, exempt, and business personal property values for situated in this fiscal year 2015. The DOR requires us to do this. It's all part of our work plan, so this is something that we just need to do. General laws of the Commonwealth, Massachusetts, and rules of regulations of Commissioner of Revenue. How often, Todd? Every, uh, every two or three years. Uh, last time we did it was 2009, 2012. We used the same company that we were recommending we use this time, PK Valuation Group. They scored very highly on all of our criteria. Uh, like I said, we've used them previously. We like them. They are a powerhouse on the Cape, covering 11 of the 15 communities on Cape Cod. Um, this is a major reason why we chose them in 2005. So the Board of Assessors would uh, recommend that we grant the contract to PK Valuation Group. I have a list of some of the things that they will do in the contract with us. I'll just list those off. The contractor will conduct field review inspections of all sales, residential and commercial, build new cost tables for all improved parcels, build new land schedules, neighborhood values for all parcels, Perform market analysis, including water influence studies, value trends, and area analysis. Conduct income and expense analysis for all commercial and industrial properties. Value all telecom accounts. Participates in new growth data collection. Conducts recollection of improved exempt parcels per DOR directive. And participate uh, in the certification process with the DOR field rep. DOR will visit the town on October 7th through the 11th, and they will also provide all DOR spreadsheet database reports required for our town certification. How many proposals did you have, Tom? I believe we had two in. Uh, one of the problems is using another vendor, you have to take on their software, and it's, a, it's an incurred cost of about $75,000 extra, I believe, okay. just for the conversion. So what's the what's the charge for? I believe it's yeah, 70 71 something. 71 8. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, recognizing that we've used them for the past since 2005, I think yeah. you said. Um, I assume the the assessors will take a look to see whether or not it would make sense to maybe switch at some point in the future, given the fact that Granted, we're using them because we have their software. Yeah. They kind of suck you in, and now you're stuck. You know, it's kind of like having an Apple or a, uh, yeah. um, a, a Word or something and say, I can't go to Apple because all right. my computers are Word-oriented. PK Valuation is very good on coastal communities, too, and that's why we chose them in the beginning, and all these communities are still using them. So it, if something changed, we would definitely right. consider. Okay. Motion? Please, if we're all set. Move to grant the fiscal year 2015 reevaluation contract to PK Valuation Group in the amount of $71,800. Second. And motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Thanks everyone. Okay, next is a discussion and a vote for a general obligation bond anticipation note. Pam. Hello. Pam, how are you? I heard good you evening. had some good news tonight. Pam. I have great news. Okay. And I'm going to boast about this great news for the town of Sidgwick. But um, I'm going to go off my memorandum for now. So um, the town was um, going to borrow eight million three hundred thousand for various projects, um, st school security and technology, uh, one hundred fifty thousand for both of those roads, four hundred thousand la ladder truck, four hundred thousand. So those were all general fund borrowings. And then we had two borrowings for um, the Water Enterprise Fund, which is water pipe replacement for 400000 and water pipe improvements um, for 6800000 So um, to get ready for this borrowing, since it was a, a substantial amount of money, our financial advisors thought that we should have a Standard & Poor's rating again. So Nancy, uh, Trisha and myself prepared a presentation and we met with um, Standard & Poor's on May 6th and we had a, a phone conversation with them and I believe you guys all got the handout for what was presented to Standard & Poor's 
and they came back with a short-term borrowing rate of plus one, which is the highest short-term borrowing rate that they give out. And again, they affirmed our long-term borrowing rate of AA plus. So we were thrilled with the results. Um, I think Situate has a great financial team, and um, I know the three of us are really proud. <laughs> so uh, it went out to bid and um, to the uh, for the $8.3 million. And uh, the town received three bids, and the winning bid was Mitsubishi Securities. At a coupon rate of 0.75% in a premium, we received a premium of $17,679. And at the end of all this, we only have to pay back 20000 and change. So I want to put this in perspective. We are borrowing $8.3 million. They gave us another 17000 and change for premium. So that'll cover our issuance costs. And at the end of it, we only have to pay back 20. So we're pretty much getting free money, right, for three months. I mean, that's huge. Our financial advisors couldn't believe that they came out with this rate. Uh, everybody was floored. I questioned it several times because I thought something was wrong somewhere. I mean, we are ba barely paying over $2,000 <coughs> for $8.3 million. Do you think we could continue this if we, you know, the project with the Gates School? Well, we're lucky because, well, this was a short-term borrowing, but we're lucky because we still have our our long-term borrowing rate of AA plus. So we're going to go out. We'll have to roll this over because this is only for 90 days. So we'll roll this into the bigger borrowing when we go out for the library, the school, or whatever should come up come September. Um, so, but we'll uh, we've already gone through the standard and poor's price process, so we won't have to do that part again. I mean, I I see Situate as just great. I mean, we're in a really good shape. How do, how do, how do, how do we get there? I'm so excited. Yeah. How, 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 did, how did we get there, Pam? Good leadership, Sean. Well, that's how you said it, Tony. Thank you. No, obviously not. I These think three that, right here. I, I think know. that we have a good financial team. I think that all of Town Hall deserves a big pat on the back. It's not just the financial team. I think we all work really good together. and. This has made good decisions over the last. Right, I think know, Trish has five, made a lot. Five, six years, and it's a lot of stuff. different decisions. I think Nancy coming in, you know, has been great, and myself too. Do you think you could <laughs> add a zero to that and maybe borrow eighty million? We could plop it in a CD and make a little bit of money over there. Yeah, I'm telling. I, I I don't think anything gets better than this. I mean, great. this is great. This is great news. So when we start to, you know, talk about the new middle school and the public safety complex and stuff, the fact that we're able to, you know, hopefully sustain this kind with the bond rating and the interest rates will really, in the long term, dollar. save hundreds of thousands of dollars over 30 right. years for um, our debt and, and tax rates. And we had six. I mean, that was the winning bid. Of course, we take the lowest. But we had four others, I mean five others, excuse me, and they were all great rates. Um, I mean, this one was decided on, you know, they gave us the most pre you know, premium money, <coughs> which is pretty much free money. I mean, not free, but Close yeah, free. Right. I mean, it's going to pay all our issuance costs, and it's not going to cost the town any money. I mean, great job. I mean how do you borrow $8.3 million for a little over two grand? Like, seriously? I'd like to borrow a couple of million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even I could pay that interest rate back. <laughs> I mean, it's. I think Situate's come a long way, and I think it's a positive outlook for the future for all these upcoming, you know, public safety buildings, school, library. I think it's, it's great. Save the town tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's Absolutely. Great. I think we're definitely headed the up. De definitely up. Motion. Okay, I'm going to read uh, the second, motion. Nancy, anything else you want to add? I mean, this no, is. I mean, how can you um, not be happy with a, oh. a note at nine basis points? Right. On nine basis points. Okay. We're actually paying less than what we can earn interest on in the bank, and that's so unusual currently. Right. That's great, and that's why I wanted to 
you know, hear from everyone. Thank you. We all thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to read these motions one at a time. So, motion to approve the sale of an eight eight million three hundred thousand dollar point seven five percent general obligation bond anticipation note, the note of the town dated May thirtieth, two thousand fourteen, and payable September twenty sixth, two thousand fourteen to Mitsubishi UFJ Securities USA, incorporated at par and accrued interest, if any, plus a premium of $17,679. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion that in connection with the marketing and sale of the note, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated May 13, 2014, and a final official statement dated May 20th, 2014, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That the town treasurer and the board of selectmen be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver a significant events disclosure undertaking in compliance with SEC Rule 15C2-12 in such form as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the note for the benefit of the holders of the note from time to time. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That we authorize and direct the treasurer to establish post-issuance federal tax compliance procedures in such form as the treasurer and bond council deem sufficient of such procedures are in currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the notes. Second. A motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Finally, that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, and the Town Treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Unanimous. Good job. Okay. Just one quick thought, Pam. Do we have any debt that we're paying <coughs> much higher interest on that we want to Well, hold? We, we have those two that I've brought up to you in the past uh, that were done in 2005 that we're watching. Um, we, it's just not feasible to do it right now. Um, but when September comes up, that is something else we might roll into. You know, we're, we're watching it. We're keeping a close eye on it, but we're, it's, it wasn't feasible <coughs> at right now. So it's still hanging out there. We're not going to, you know, we keep a close eye. So we'll keep, we'll keep on, keep on it. Okay, well, thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Appreciate it. Okay. Moving on, um, is a discussion and a vote for the town pier rehab <coughs> contract uh, with Coastal Marine Construction. Box, patient here, Paul Scott. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so, Third uh, time's the charm. Exactly. <coughs> Good evening, uh, Mark Addison, the job master, uh, with Paul Scott. Um, formerly of DPW, now we're uh, acting as a project manager for the rehabilitation of the commercial fish pier. Uh, I know that we've, I've been before you a couple of other times uh, during this project um, for funding. We're now at a point where we're ready to award the contract. Um, the engineer plans went out to bid. They were open on January 23rd. Um, Child's uh, Engineering, our engineer of record, uh, has reviewed those bids and recommends the contract be awarded to the lowest responsible bidder, Coastal Marine Construction. Uh, incorporated for eight hundred forty-five thousand five hundred forty-five sixty, um, and we're here tonight to request the board of selectmen award that contract. <coughs> Any questions or comments? No. No. Seventy-five mm percent -hmm. to a grant. Our motion. Yeah, if seventy-five yeah, percent to the other. waterways enterprise fund. Yeah, between seventy-five and eighty percent of the projects being funded through a grant. The other twenty to twenty-five percent is coming from the enterprise fund, with nothing coming from the town of Citrus General Fund. Excellent. That's what so I wanted you to say. So twenty-five percent of eight forty-five. Correct. We're responsible for. That's it's right. Coming from from enterprise waterways. Fund. That's right. That's correct. Not to the tax. Right. Okay. I'll move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the Town Pier Rehabilitation <coughs> Contract Number TPR-1-13. 
to Coastal Marine Construction, LLC of Milton, Massachusetts, for a total bid utilizing alternative number one of $845,545.60. That's $45.60, with payment to be made at the unit price and or lump sum prices, pending receipt of a certificate of insurance, 100% performance bond, and 100% labor and materials bond. I have a motion. Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. I'm it, sorry, Paul, did you want to add anything? I, I'm sorry you've been no, here for a while. No, not really, other than um, to, to let you know that will become a construction site, so it will be closed to the general public. Uh, we will notify the various businesses in that area that might tend to use it. Uh, there is going to be, uh, Frank Maracci has uh, been on board from the very beginning as the fishing <coughs> liaison, so there's going to be a, a situation where the only ones that are going to be allowed on the pier would be the fishermen uh, with their ice trucks and so forth. And that will be a coordination problem. Part of the contract is the contractor must designate a liaison with the fishermen uh, with cell phone and emails and all of that. So uh, that's our one concern right now is being able to uh, work with the fishermen and, and uh, provide them with access when they need it. So many hurdles to, you know, jump through now. <coughs> you know, anything else would be... That much more difficult. Well, when we'll do, when does again, this project we will be closing it down to the public, uh, to the general public? When does the project intend we're, to start? We're, we're hoping around the, about the middle of June. Okay. Yeah. The middle and of June. we haven't had a pre-construction yet, but we will within the next. How week long or so. will it go on for? They have yeah. 120 days, okay. four months. So okay. All right. And you have it. Looks like you have a contingency. Yes, we do. If it runs over. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay. Model. All right, okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank Appreciate you. It. Okay. <coughs> Next is uh, other business. I'll start with Marty if you want to go ahead. I don't have anything this evening. Okay. We mentioned that thing yesterday. There you go. Okay. Uh, Tony, other business. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Um, what's going on? Um, the one thing I just wanted to, to thank everybody that participated in the parade yesterday. Um, the weather held off and it ended up being beautiful. The, the veterans did a great job. The grounds people did a great job. All the different organizations with Little League and uh, Girl Scouts and the two bands. Um, it was really, really a good, good event and showed our community uh, very well and good speakers and um, you know, I was very proud of it, and, and uh, it felt like a very special day. I don't know if you guys had. I heard nothing but great, great yeah. things about everything. You know, from the the, the uh, chorus. I mean, the band. You know, from the junior high and high school, as well as the, the Girl Scouts. And it was right. just a lot of positive feedback. It was all ages. Yeah, really. Yeah. When you think about very it. Very. Nice. And considering the weather wasn't that good, it was a pretty good turnout, um, as well. Um, the I guess on the sporting front, it's. I feel it's my responsibility. Uh, um, baseball team made it to the playoffs, and they have a playoff game on the Cape on Friday. And the two lacrosse teams are in the playoffs. Uh, both of them are very highly seeded. The girls, I think, were number two seed, and the boys are high two. So they'll have some home games here in the next couple of days. And um, there's just a lot going on as, as the school year comes to an end. Um, and. Um, also, you know, I, I think you guys, I saw a bunch of you guys there. Last week, one of the nicest events of the year at the school is they have the arts, what do they call it? The arts? Spring for the Arts. Spring for the Arts. And they have it over at the high school, and they have the artwork from all of the different schools, all the different grades. And uh, it was just a great event, and the choruses sing out on the common. And again, it was just all kids are running around and playing and having hot dogs and stuff, and you get to walk through the school and see all these beautiful pieces of artwork. So everyone that put that together, that's a real special day as well. Um, and then the only other thing I'll bring up is that it is actually election weekend, and that on the 31st, um, we're having an election. It's not a highly contested one, but there are a few positions that are out there for, uh, um, that are contested. So I um, suggest or, or ask that you all go vote and, and pick the candidates and show that you're involved in town government. The poll hours are from 8 to 5. Eight to five. Right. So it'll be at the high school and uh, get out there and find five minutes to go vote for your candidates. Is that it, Tony? That's it. John? None, Mr. Chairman. Okay. The only thing I had was, and I had seen it advertised in Cohasset, 
there's a hazardous waste collection day All right. in situate at the highway department on May 31st. <laughs> It's at the dump. There's at the. There's a, there's a sign at the dump. Big sign there. All right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So what wait. happens is we're member of South Shore. Right. So right. Um, each month the town hosts the hazardous waste collection. Right. Yep. So anybody That's from that town can go. Right. Okay. And I just throw that out there because you know I'm sure we just, have a few paint cans and things like that. Just want to add to that, Sean, if you sure. don't mind. Electronics. There's a, also a date, right? For electronics, it's a different date. It's the 13th or the 14th. It's just for any electronics. 14th, I think. Electronics. Yeah. at our transfer station. Right. Okay. That does it for minutes, unless anyone else has anything else. And is there any correspondence? I'm looking, I don't, I don't see anything. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm looking at stuff that's sideways. And, so, yeah. all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't see any correspondence. Like that. Yeah. Um, okay, we don't have any. All right, minutes of May 13th, 2014. Move the minutes of uh, May 13, 2014. Okay. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And lastly, uh, we're going to move into executive session to consider the purchase and exchange lease or value of real property. And I declare that if this was done in an open meeting, it would have a detrimental effect on the negotiation, negotiating positions of the public body. And we'll be discussing the strategy with respect to collective bargaining if an open meeting law has been a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body. And I so declare that it is. We will not be moving into uh, open session after executive session. If I could have a motion to move into executive oh. session, I guess. I, I, I don't have the motion. <coughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen. I'm sorry. Yeah, you Hold on. Right here. Is this it? Yeah. Call their name. Yeah. Mr. Danahy? I, I, my motion was good enough? Yep. All right, yeah. perfect. Ms. You have to still do the roll call. Mr. Yes. Danahy? Right. Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Mr. O'Toole? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Come in, folks. You. Thank you. Thank you.